Hey guys, it's Trent Stabler, and uh, today I'm making this tutorial to show you guys how to make uh, mixes and mashups in Reason. And um, I know for a fact that it took me a while to figure out really how I could do it, um, but once figured out, it's it's really it's really fun and easy. Um, but keep in mind, this is not I don't know a whole bunch bunch about it. Uh, so this might, this probably isn't the most efficient way, but this is how I like to do it, and it's been working out really well. I've been making, um, uh, five to eight hour, or ten hour even, uh, mix and mashup of my favorite songs of all time. And that's why I haven't been putting tutorials out. And it's taking a long time, as you can imagine, so, uh, I have to do the drum and bass part next, so I figured I'd hit two birds with one stone and make a tutorial at the same time. So again, this is probably not the most efficient way. If you guys have, you know, better ways... Feel free to put them in the comments, but um, this is how I like to do it, and it's working out great. So, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do, um, a lot of this is hypothetical, but uh, you obviously want to find the type of songs you want to put in the mix. Um, right now I'm going to be doing drum and bass. You usually want it to be um, all the same or similar tempos, so you can um, change the tempo so they're all the same tempo and mix them together uh, without changing the song too much, because if you speed it up or slow it down uh, a song too much, then it will sound completely different and just won't sound right. So, uh, this is probably the hardest part about it, really, um, is finding the tempo of the songs that you want um, in there. Like, for example, I have a folder. Uh, favorite of all time for mix. Uh, let's go to melodic drum and bass. And these are all the songs that I'm going to put in this mix. Now, you want to figure out the order, the best order, and what songs blend together, but that's not really going to be covered in this tutorial, because that's all personal preference. Um, now, to find the tempo, it, there are there are a few different ways, but honestly, I didn't find very many viable ways at all. Um, the best way I figured out was to download... I have Virtual DJ Pro, I don't actually use it. <laughs> I got it a long time ago. Um, and I don't have DJ equipment and whatnot, at least that works anymore. And... Uh, I think you can just you can get the free version. I think you can uh, do this with the free version too. I'm almost certain. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Basically, we're just using uh, Virtual DJ here to tell us the tempo. Because I looked online and there are there are not many options for um, there are like you can tap the tempo what you want it to be accurate when you're mixing. You don't want it just the uh, in the ballpark estimate. You know. Um, so if you guys find programs that you guys can use, feel free to put them in the comments and help other people out. But Anyway, this is fastest for me, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with, let's start with uh, this banger, Unstoppable by Metric, or sorry, Metric Remix. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it here, and as you can see, it's already calculating the tempo. Now, as we know, drum and bass is between... Uh, like 160 or 170 and like 180. So what this is doing for some reason is uh, it doesn't expect it to be that fast, so it, it halves it. So what you have to do after is obviously you have to uh, double the tempo. Now sometimes it won't do that, but for this time it, it is, obviously. So let's see, what's that? What's double that? You can, I'm bad at math, so that would be 175, which is about perfect. That's good. So, let's minimize that. And now, uh, what you want to do in Reason is uh, you're going to have to... Uh, you can adjust the tempo while in Reason, but you have to, um, at least, again, this is how I know it, uh, to start it at the correct tempo. So, let's bump it up to 175. So, when we import it, we can then change the tempo as we wish. So, uh, let's go to File, Import Audio File. Er, sorry, my bad. You can do this, um, but you're going to want to create, uh, it'll create an auto audio track for you, but you want to create it manually first because you'll be uploading multiple tracks into multi -audio, multiple audio files. So let's create. Create audio track. Why is this running slowly? I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on here. But anyway. So now I'm going to click on it. Make sure you click on it. So uh, whichever track you click on, this is where you'll import it to. Uh, unstoppable. Let's upload that. And here we go. 
Now, um, what uh, I think uh, I'm not really sure why this happens, but in in pretty much every song, um, at least after maybe it's the mastering phase, maybe it's the mixing phase. I don't know. Maybe it's somewhere in between. But as you can see, if you zoom in, you which is what you're going to want to do to match the tempos and make sure you basically you want to make sure the um, it that it starts on the downbeat of one. So it, uh, it, like if we were to add the click right now, you can hear the clicks way off because of the fact that it's that it doesn't start on exactly one. So we're going to zoom in as much as we can. Going to unsnap it so it's not snapped to um, to quantize. And we're going to snip it so it's about on one. It doesn't have to be exact, but obviously I want to get it about exact. So right about where the waveform starts. Sometimes there it'll some tracks will be hard to do this with others. Some will have intro, but this one luckily starts on one. So now. Now the click is exactly on. Obviously, you don't want the click on. You know, you just want to be able to tell it. You just want it to be able to um, see if it's on or not. So, I'm gonna turn it off. And it's still on, as you can see, as you can hear, rather. So, uh, there's there's that. There's the first song we've got in there. Now, the next part to making a mix is uh, sometimes you'll have to... Um, I have to recommend you guys do not use... Uh, refrain from using uh, iTunes files because they are horrible quality. They are 128 kbps. You don't want that. You want 320. And um, I'm using mp3s. I maybe should be using waves, but that, those are way too big of files for me. And I'm making, what, a 10-hour mix? That would fill up my hard drive. So, um, anyway, I'm using MP3s. Luckily, I think this is 320, as you can hear. And you'll usually be able to tell, frankly, by it. You can see it's good quality. It's not clipping. Now, iTunes files, sometimes uh, you'll see that they are clipping, and you need to remaster them sometimes. I'll make a tutorial on that maybe later, but some you need sometimes you're going to need to go into the audio track here and create a compressor and a, mostly a maximizer limiter so you can make sure it doesn't clip but luckily I don't think we're gonna have to do that for any of these tracks so the next part is we're gonna find where we want the next track to start fading in so you just gotta you gotta take a listen to the song and find out where you want it. I'm thinking right about out of control. Here. yep right there so I'm gonna start uh, I'm gonna decide what track I want to go in next so I'm going to go back to my finder and find the next file. Uh, this is part is up to personal preference. I think I'll go with um, Fighter by Dr. Meeker. Because I think it's going to fit well with this track. So now we have to go back to Virtual DJ and just do the same thing. Uh, see what the tempo is. Looks like 88, so that will be what, 176? I think so. Yeah, 176. So, I'm using a calculator. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's 176. That's weird, but basically, uh, when you, one thing I forgot to mention is when you, when you import the files, you want to make sure um, you can do two things with them. Well, more than that. Disable and enable the stretch. Disabling the stretch will keep the track at what it is. It'll keep it, no matter what tempo you have built in internally, it'll it'll keep the same tempo. If you enable stretch, which is what it is right now, it'll go along if you import it correctly to the, you have to, remember guys, you have to import it at the uh, correct tempo that it is. But then you can, uh, if you enable the stretch, it'll it'll follow whatever tempo you want. So I can, I can move this all the way down to uh, whenever I want. It's just, it'll sound really kind of bad. But, as you can see, it's calculating now. That'll take a just a, it won't take that long because it's one song. But once we have the whole mix, you know, it'll sound a lot different. I'm just gonna wait for it to calculate. It'll just be a few seconds. All right. Yeah. Let's see what this sounds like. As you can see, it is much slower, and the click still on. Follow the tempo. 
So I'm going to move back to 175. Actually, let's move to 176 because we need to import the next track. So this is adjusting. It automatically adjusts. You can still play back and everything, but uh, until, until it's done calculating, it'll sound a little iffy because it's not done. So now we're going to create an audio track. And on this one, we're going to click on it and import audio file. Make sure it's where you want it to be in the track. Make sure it's snapped to the bar. And what we were going to do, we were going to do Fighter. Now this one I might have bought from iTunes, so it might I might have to remaster it. But I'm gonna uh, sorry guys, I'm gonna actually move this back to the beginning so I can um, make sure it comes in on one again, just like the other one. And as you can see, if I zoom in, it does not quite come in on one. So we want to be able to fix that. So we'll just do this, and this is the majority of what this is really making this mix. It's easier to say, and as you can see, actually this isn't quite on one either. Whoopsies. I don't know. I think it's uh it's cuz I I think it's cuz I snapped it. I'm just going to leave it alone. I changed the tempo or whatnot. So anyway, this is on one now, so that's good. I'll snap it. Make sure it's locked. I'm going to solo it so I can make sure it's it's actually on tempo. All right, you want to clip through the track to make sure it's still on. Yep, sounds like it's perfect. Perfect. So uh let's turn the click off. And now we're going to move it back to where we want it to start coming in, which is about here. Yep. Oh, sorry. No, this is only halfway through the track. I want it to be here. My bad. Okay, and now comes the mixing part. Um, so I apologize. It's kind of a long, slow tutorial, but I feel like it's important. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, um, you can also uh, edit the, you can put a, you could add a low pass filter in here, or a high pass, and you could automate the automation so it, to make it come in, um, you know, if it's if it's too much on one frequency and you can make it come in smoother, but usually you can just do it with volume because that's how you would do it if you're mixing live on vinyls and stuff, CDJs. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, edit this automation so it fades out. I'm going to fade it out. I'm going to record. And you want to make sure you press on this little record button because if you if you if it's checked, if you record, it'll start recording over the audio track. As you can see. So that's not what we want undo that. So you want to uncheck this, make sure it's not. And uh yeah, so let's go ahead and fade it out. Oh, I'll give me a counting. You can fade it out however you see fit, slowly, and then you can, what I like to do is go in and uh, edit the automation myself, see, because sometimes you want it to, you know, linger a little bit, and then completely fade out. I want it gone by now. And then you can extend that. You want to always extend it so it doesn't, because there will be, you know, uh, in, the, in this file here, there will be uh, probably other outro stuff. And you you want it to be gone, so if you you want to make sure that the uh, you extend the automation so it's it's gone. And I'm gonna go in here and just edit real quick. I want it to um be a little bit of a uh, I don't want it to be a linear slope. I want it to gradually fade out at the beginning, kind of like an exponential slope. So there you go. That's about perfect. And that's not all. Now we have to fade in this one. So, let's give myself recording, make sure this is unchecked. Turn this all the way down first. And slowly fade it in. You want to make sure it's going about the same rate as the other one's fading out. Although you want it to actually go a little faster at first because you want to make sure that something is playing or else it'll be way too quiet if they're both fading. So, and then you go to about as close to one as you can, and then stop recording. And that's a pretty good ratio, frankly, or a uh, slope. I'm going to make sure, make, make, maybe make it come in a little bit earlier and then slowly fit in. And you want to make sure it's never clipping. One thing, another thing you can do at the end of a mix to make sure it's not clipping is put just put a, a limiter in here. Not a limit. Well, yeah, a maximizer. Turn off the limiter, turn on the soft clip, 
put the amount all the way down, and then that'll make sure that it's not going to clip, that nothing's going to clip over this. But I'm going to bypass that for now so I can manually do that. And now it's fading in, and as you can see, good on, I don't even have to remaster this, this is good. Sounds good. And then we, what we would do next is we would do the exact same thing. We'd find the next, I'm not going to do it again, but you'd find the next track you'd want. You'd adjust the tempo. And, you know, I, I don't want it to 176 back again. You're going to change it depending on the next song you're going to import, but I want it 175 overall, so it'll calculate this back here. And, yeah. So that's about it. Uh, again, I, this, is, this probably isn't the most efficient way. This is how I like to do it. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you do. You can do in reason with mixing things, making mashups. So I'm going to continue this, uh, and I'm going to. I'll keep you guys posted on the mix. It will be huge. I really <laughs> hope it doesn't get deleted from YouTube for copyright either, because it, it is 10 hours long almost. It's gonna. It's a, it's a lot of work. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or anything I missed, I could have easily missed something. I just kind of threw this tutorial together. I apologize. Um, so yeah. Uh, I guess I'll see you next time.